Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing a short review of this Altair Astro 130 EDTF triplet refractor. This is a scope I purchased directly from Altair Astro a few months ago now, and I thought it's about time I did a review. So without further ado, let's crack on. So as you can see, it's a very large scope. So let's talk about the dimensions. So the length of the scope from the front with the dew shield extended to the rear end of the optical tube assembly before you've got any correctors, reducers, or even your camera assembly is 96 centimeters. So it's one long telescope. It weighs in at a massive 12 kilograms. So you're gonna need some beefy mount. And as well, that 12 kilograms is before I've added any of the additional things, such as an additional Osmandi plate and the, the other bits and bobs that I need to drive it for astrophotography. So do pay attention to the amount of weight that you need. You may notice that down here on my AZ EQ6, I've had to buy an additional weight. So we've got 15 kilograms of weight balancing this. So let's talk about the optical specifications of the scope. At the front, as the name suggests, it's 130 mm front aperture. The scope itself is 910 mm for focal length. So that's quite a reach into the night sky. It's nearly double that of my current refractor, which is an Esprit 100. So I'm hoping I'll be able to frame and get some targets, which have just been a little bit too challenging for the Esprit 100 at 550 mm. The focal speed is F7, so it's not the fastest scope in the world, nor is it the slowest. There is an optional corrector stroke reducer you can get, which is 0.8, so that brings that focal length down to 724 at a speedier f5.6. So let's talk about the build quality of the scope. As you can see, there's a red theme going on here. Um, it's finished in this lovely red anodized metal look and feel. Right from the scope cover down to the focuser down here, everything is anodized red. The carry handle here is drilled out at the top with M6 holes, so you can attach various attachments, uh, easily fit a guide scope in here, and this the top of the handle is actually a Narca Swiss fitting. The scope rings, so one thing I did have to do was adjust these ever so slightly, and what I mean by that is, no matter how tight I made these, the scope would still slip, especially when pointed at the zenith. So what I've done is I've put a couple of mil of felt in, the, in between the tube and the scope rings and tightened it back up. And since I've done that, it's been absolutely fine. So this is the front element. As you can see, each of these scopes is serial numbered. Mine's number 16. I did actually have serial number 12 originally, but more on that later on. The glass is SLPL53, which according to Altra Hastro is a high quality Japanese coated glass. So at the end of the optical tube assembly, we have this huge M92 threaded 3.7 inch rack and pinion focuser. It comes with a coarse adjustment and a fine adjustment. I've actually got my Sesta Senso 2 attached to this, which went on really easy. I had to buy an adapter from Prima Lucha Lab to fit that. And if you want the details of that, it's in the link below. As you can see, the focuser tube has quite a long draw. So Right now, this is approximately where my focus is. So it's at 70 millimeters out. It's a really nice focuser. Um, it's held in with these brass screws around here. And then the other thing to make a note of is we have a rotator. This is a manual rotator, but a nice touch. So obviously when you want to frame those targets and alter the orientation so you get more of that nebula in shot, the rotator is great. And you just set that up as a manual rotator in Nina. So I mentioned earlier, if you're using this telescope for astrophotography, you're going to probably need some kind of field flattener. What I've got on here at the moment is a TS Optics M93 one times flattener. So I'm getting my native focal length of 910 millimeters. There is an Altair Astro equivalent of this, but it wasn't in stock at the time. I did end up buying the Altair Astro 0.8 reducer, which again is an M92 threaded fit and at the back of that is where you've got your 55 millimeters backspacing to your camera. So let's talk about some bad points. Uh, there are no real bad points about this telescope. So far, I've been really pleased with its performance optically and just a joy to use. So no qualms there. However, when I received this telescope, I actually received serial number 12 and you'll notice that this is number 16. So what happened to number 12? Well, on that first night out of taking some images, I instantly noticed that the, f the stars were all over the place in terms of shape, in the corners, but also worryingly in the middle of the field of view. I'll put some examples of what I could see over the, over the top of the video. 
So after a bit of toing and froing with Altair Astro, they agreed that there's something optically wrong with the assembly. I checked back spacing, I checked my tilt, polar alignment was great, guiding was great. So the, I knew there was something wrong with it. Um, when I got the flight case out there, it came in to send it back. You could clearly see there was some damage that I hadn't noticed when I'd excitedly unpacked it on the day of arrival. It looked like it had been dropped and this end where the end of the focus tube had hit the outside of the case, so much so that it smashed through it. Alte received it back and they said, yes, all the lens elements have basically shifted. I could have corrected it myself, but when you're paying two and a half thousand pounds for a scope, um, they kindly sent a replacement, which is this one. And this hasn't had any issues whatsoever, so I'm fairly happy. And shout out to Alter Astro for replacing it so quickly. So just on that flight case issue, it clearly states on the Altair Astro website that the case is designed to protect this scope during transit. And if it's damaged the outside of the case, then it's done its job. I'm not a big fan of that. If I take my Esprit 100, the case that that comes in is so well packed, so the scope cannot move. What you'll find with this is when the scope's in the case, there's a lot of wiggle room, so it can move around. And yes, it is foam protected, but I'd like to see that case packed out more so that the scope can't move during transit. It's a very, very minor thing, um, but I thought I'd mention it. It's just my own personal view. So before we get on and have a look at some of the images I've taken with this thing, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you found it useful, please do consider dropping me a like or a subscribe. I will be eternally grateful. I've really enjoyed what I've used so far of this scope and I'm looking forward to using it more as we get into late autumn and then ultimately into the winter months. So as ever, clear skies everybody and take care of yourselves. is drilled out with M6 holes and is essential to help you carry out this very large telescope. The scope rings here, um, I also finished in this red anodized looking, f oh, got a wasp. Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing a short review of this beast, which is the Altair Astro 130 EDTF. So as I mentioned earlier, this thing is a triplet refractor, which means it's got three lens elements within inside the optical tube assembly. That allows us to focus the red, green and blue light to a nice pinpoint. As with most triplet refractors, you're going to need to provide some kind of field flattener. So the telescope itself doesn't come with any out of the box. So there are several options. There's a 0.8 reducer, 